This is the Tudor's Dynasty Podcast. And now, a brief history. On the 19th of July, 1545, the Mary Rose sank in the Soylent with the loss of life and nearly 500. It is a common myth of Tudor history that this was her maiden voyage. But the truth is that the Mary Rose had been in service for nearly three and a half decades on that July day in 1545. Before the Tudors, monarchs relied on privately owned ships to defend the English waters in times of war and to transport armies overseas. Henry VII began the process of creating a navy with the construction of five warships, but it was during Henry VIII's reign that the rate of royal shipbuilding accelerated. By 1547, the size of the navy had increased to over 50 ships. One of the first ships commissioned by the young king in January 1510 was the Mary Rose. Along with her sister ship, Peter Pomegranate, she was constructed at Portsmouth. The two ships were most likely named after Saints Mary and Peter, and the badges used by Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. An innovative feature of the Mary Rose was the provision of gun ports, allowing her to carry a small number of heavy guns. At the time, most naval engagements were based around boarding the enemy ship rather than using long-range weapons. By the end of 1511, Henry VIII had joined the Holy League against France, and in 1512, an English fleet patrolled the sea between England and France. Sir Edward Howard, son of the Earl of Surrey, commanded the fleet, and he chose the Mary Rose as his flagship. Throughout the summer of 1512, Howard successfully raided along the coast of Brittany, culminating with the Battle of St. Matthew on the 10th of August. During the engagement, the Mary Rose successfully shot out the mainmast of the French flagship, the Grand Louise. Two other ships, the English Regent and French Cordelier, came together during the battle. An explosion on the Cordelier caused a fire that spread across both ships. They sank with the loss of 1,500 lives including a number of French women and children who had been on board celebrating the Feast of St. Lawrence. Among the dead was Howard's brother-in-law, Thomas Nivet. Howard swore that he would not see the king again until he had avenged Nivet's death. After spending the winter at home, the English fleet returned to the coast around Brest in the spring of 1513. Edward Howard, now Lord Admiral, was in command again. The French had learned from the previous year and assembled a large fleet under a veteran commander. They attacked Howard's fleet on the 22nd of April, inflicting considerable damage. Three days later, Howard led a retaliatory attack and successfully boarded the French commander's galley. However, he was forced overboard, and weighed down by his armor, he drowned. The English fleet fled back to England where Howard's older brother, Sir Thomas Howard, the future 3rd Duke of Norfolk, was appointed Lord Admiral. Like his brother before him, Thomas chose the Mary Rose as his flagship and used her to transport soldiers north to the Battle of Flodden. Once it was clear that a peace treaty would be agreed upon between England and France, it was no longer necessary to maintain the fleet on a wartime footing. In August 1514, most of the royal ships, including the Mary Rose, returned to Deptford, where they were decommissioned and their rigging and guns were removed. Naval action in the 1520s was limited, but the Mary Rose was part of the fleet that escorted Henry VIII to the Field of Cloth of Gold and was the English flagship during the war with France in 1522-25. The next few years were dominated by Henry VIII's Great Matter, culminating in his marriage to Anne Boleyn, the annulment of his marriage to Catherine of Aragon, and the 1534 Act of Supremacy that declared him head of the Church of England. These events placed England in a vulnerable international position. Henry's actions were strongly opposed by both Emperor Charles V and the Pope. Furthermore, Henry's nephew James V of Scotland had refused to break with Rome and instead resurrected the old alliance with France. 
It's unsurprising, therefore, that the Mary Rose spent all of 1536 and the start of 1537 being refitted. This work included adding extra gun ports and strengthening the sides of the ship. Unfortunately, this seems to have reduced her good speed and handling. During 1539, the Mary Rose was in Deptford, ready to defend the River Thames in the event of combined attack by Charles V and Francis I. By the end of 1542, the international outlook had shifted again. Hostilities had resumed between Francis I and Charles V, while closer to home, the English defeated the Scots at the Battle of Solway Moss on the 24th of November, 1542. James V died shortly afterwards and was succeeded by his six-day-old daughter, Mary. Oh, hey, it's Rebecca here. I'm sorry to interrupt the show. I just want to quick do a shout out to all of my patrons. And if you love the show, you want to hear more of it, want to show your support, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash tutors dynasty. Click become a patron to find out more info. We had some cool stuff coming up. So let's get back to the show. In February 1543, Henry VIII reached an agreement with Charles V to launch a joint attack on France, and 5,000 men were sent to Calais that summer. The following year, Henry's attentions were divided. The Scottish Parliament had rejected a treaty that would have seen Prince Edward marry the young Queen of Scotland. In retaliation, Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, was sent to raid the Scottish lowlands. However, the attack on Scotland was dwarfed by Henry's invasion of France. An army of 40,000 men crossed to the continent in May 1544. Henry joined his army in mid-July, and on the 14th of September, the town of Bologna surrendered to the English. Just four days later, Charles V and Francis I signed a peace treaty, leaving Henry to fight France on his own. The French response to the English invasion came in 1545. Admiral Claude de Nibault put together a fleet of over 200 ships, substantially outnumbering the 80 ships that the English could muster. In an attempt to preempt an attack, the English Admiral John Dudley, Viscount Lyle, sent fire ships amongst the French boats to the Le Havre, burning the French flagship. However, the French were undeterred, and on the 12th of July, 1545, they sailed for England. They called out a minor raid in Sussex on the 18th of July before entering the Solent the following day. The Mary Rose was part of the English fleet, under the command of the relatively inexperienced Vice Admiral of the fleet, Sir George Carew. Carew had a diverse mix of sailors, soldiers, gunners, and servants on board his ship. Recent research using isotope and DNA samples, as well as recovered belongings, showed that serving alongside the English crew members were a Devon-born teenager with parents from North Africa, a Northern African archer, a gentleman possibly from Venice, and a Spanish carpenter. A lack of wind initially hampered the English ships, but on the afternoon of the 19th, they sailed out to meet the French. We'll probably never know the full details of the sinking of the Mary Rose. Was there a miscommunication on board? Had her refit made her too heavy? Was the crew being unruly? However, it's generally accepted that her starboard guns were fired. That she was then in the process of turning to fire from the port side when she sank. The only eyewitness account suggests that as she turned, she was hit by a gust of wind causing her to heal. This likely caused water to flood in through the open starboard gun ports. Nets had been placed over the deck of the ship to make it harder for the French to board the ship, so tragically, these actually trapped the sailors and soldiers on board. Just 35 men survived the sinking. Despite the loss of the Mary Rose in an attempted French invasion of the Isle of Wight, the two fleets remained at an impasse until the 23rd of July, when Denebolt retreated. The masts of the Mary Rose were still visible above the water, and it was hoped that she could be raised. Salvage operators, Petri de Andres and Simone de Marim, were employed to oversee the recovery. 
They plan to run cables under the ship and use the two other boats to pull them taut. Now this would raise her enough so that she could be moved to shallow water. Sadly, English optimism about the rescue proved misplaced. By the 9th of August, the sails had been brought ashore, but the masts, which had been secured with cables, had snapped. The Venetians were paid off in December 1545, with the salvage incomplete. However, there were still valuable guns in the wreck, and it was deemed a waste to abandon them. In 1547, a number of payments were made for the retrieval of weapons and anchors from the Mary Rose. One payment went to Italian salvage specialist Piero Paola Corsi, whose dive team was led by Jacques Francis, a man described as being from Guinea. Francis would later make a statement in court when Corsi was accused of stealing from another salvage job. This is the first known instance of an African man giving evidence in an English court. Tudor efforts to salvage the Mary Rose were abandoned in 1552, as she was gradually buried beneath the silt. The shipwreck was discovered again in 1836, after fishing nets had begun to snag on something on the seabed. Divers recovered a number of guns from the wreck, and in August, the ship was identified as the Mary Rose. There was a great deal of public interest in the discovery, and many of the finds were solid. In 1843, the salvage work ceased and the wreck was scheduled for demolition. This was never carried out, but for over 100 years, it was widely believed that the Mary Rose had been destroyed. In 1965, Alexander McKee began a project to survey shipwrecks in the Solent, hoping in part to discover the Mary Rose. On the 5th of May, 1971, the wreck of the Mary Rose was discovered for a second time and work began to establish how much of the ship survived. In 1978, it was decided that the Mary Rose should be recovered. Between 1979 and 1982, over 500 volunteer divers worked on the underwater dig, recording the site and bringing artifacts to the surface. Most of the wreck was raised on the morning of the 11th of October, 1982, and placed in a dry dock in Portsmouth Harbor. It took around 35 years to wash the salts off the Mary Rose, treat the timbers with a strengthening spray of polyethylene glycol, and then dry her out. During this time, a museum was built around her, and today visitors can enter an atmosphere-controlled open gallery to look down on the ship. There are still believed to be remains hidden on the seabed, and scientific instruments remain in place to monitor the site for future researchers. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Tudor's Dynasty podcast. You can follow and support the Tudor's Dynasty podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon at Tudor's Dynasty.